Greetings, minions. Pibbling Z here. And in case you did not notice the trigger warning before I started talking, today I want to warn you that we're going to be discussing some heavy mental health issues like depression, suicidal ideation, anxiety, stuff like that. So if you're triggered by any of those things, please don't watch this video. Please move on, watch funny cat videos, go hang out on Tumblr, play some video games, read a book, and do something else to lift your spirits because I don't want you guys to be triggered at all. Therefore, if you're watching this video and at any point you feel triggered, stop. Stop watching it, turn it off, don't feel bad at all. You need to take care of you first, and I totally understand that, so please, please do. Now, I'm sure if you've been watching me for a while now, you understand that most of my videos are full of a lot of silliness and stuff like that. Even if it's full of a lot of information, I'm usually quite goofy in them. Today, I'm not going to be because we're discussing such a serious subject. Now, over here, you generally see different pictures pop up, whether it's like Pee Wee Herman or any of the goofy things that I have over here. Uh, today, we're not going to have anything like that. Today, I want to introduce you to somebody named Gracie King. Gracie was a beautiful, beautiful girl. She was brilliant, she was talented. She was a very proud member of the Minion Horde. And a year ago, we lost Gracie to her fight for depression and she took her own life. It's a very hard day for me and a very sad day for all of the Minion Horde that we have lost one of our own. And that's one of the reasons I wanna discuss mental health with you guys today because it is her anniversary as of the time that I am recording this. And Gracie was a very bright light in everyone's life. She was giving and kind and bubbly and weird <laughs> in that minion horde kind of way. And everyone's life she touched was truly blessed. The thing is, even though you might not personally have known Gracie, she's a minion and therefore she's one of us and we've lost one of our own. And we should all take a moment to pause and think about what that means. That there is a hole in the minion horde because we no longer have Gracie with us. And so today, in honor of Gracie, we're going to tear down the stigma of mental health. We're going to rip it to shreds. We're going to talk about what's out there, what we might all be dealing with, what I am dealing with, and maybe some different ways to deal with those things. And then at the end of this video, I will post resources in case you need them. And please do not hesitate to reach out to them. Now, it's an emotional video, so I apologize for that. You know what? I don't apologize for that because it's okay to be emotional, especially about a subject that is so close to you and especially about a person that you care about so much. It's okay to be emotional. So if you feel emotional, just know that that's all right. It's okay to feel that way. Emotions just are. There are no bad ones or good ones. They just are. So... First off, let me start by explaining to you some of the mental health issues that I deal with personally. Um, I've been very outspoken about it in the past, but in case you have not heard me speak about it, I want to open this conversation. And if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to ask them and I'll try to address them in the future. Sometimes it's a little hard to keep up on your questions, but this is an important subject, so I definitely will make it a point. Um, personally, all the tears, you know. Um, I suffer from depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation, uh, OCD, which is obsessive compulsive, compulsive disorder. Um, and I am, uh, I do have BPD, which is borderline personality disorder. Now I'm going to describe all of those things to you because some people don't understand them. And if you are suffering from them, then maybe you'll take it to heart that someone that you know, because you know me, <laughs> is, is going through the same thing. And then I'm going to tell you some of the things that I do to deal with these different things. You know, am I going to touch on every single tool that I use to combat them? No, because there are so many tools, but it's a little bit and maybe it'll help you guys and it helps me to talk about it. So here we go. As far as obsessive compulsive disorder goes, it can come out in many, many different ways. I mean, some people have like certain ways that they have to touch things like, like numbers, you know, like, like I have to touch the doorknob three times before I open it, things like that. And that's completely normal in the OCD world. And there are a lot of different ways that this comes out. For me personally, 
I have this time thing with my OCD, especially if I am undergoing a lot of anxiety, my OCD will kind of rear its head and I have this time thing like if I don't touch my desk in 30 seconds, my family is going to suffer, you know, someone in my family is going to die. And even though logically I know that is not going to happen, it is this overwhelming urge. I cannot not touch the desk in that time. I have to even though my logic brain says this isn't a thing. And there are times that I have forced myself not to touch the desk and it passes and no one gets hurt. And my logic brain goes, see, but there's still, still that part of me that says, yeah, but what about next time? So it kind of becomes this thing, but largely my OCD is under control. So I'm really, really thankful for that. And if you're going through OCD issues, just know, know that you're not alone and it's totally, totally normal in our OCD type brains. You know, it's a thing. Now, anxiety is its own thing. Like I, I have like generalized anxiety and I have social anxiety. I know, me, social anxiety, go fig. It's weird, right? Like I'm a really outgoing person, but I'm also very introverted, meaning that my batteries get drained very quickly when I'm around other people. But my social anxiety comes out when, like right before I'm about to go on stage and talk to you guys, I have this issue. Right before I like go to a, an author event, with my fellow authors and teachers and librarians right before I do anything big like that. Even if I'm going like, I'm gonna meet all my friends at this restaurant, before I go to do things, I just feel crippled with anxiety. I feel like I, I can't breathe, I can't move, I can't do it. And I, I feel like I'm gonna freak out and swell up and explode. And I mean, that's really the only way I can think to explain it. But if you have social anxiety, you understand, I'm sure. But that's kind of what I feel like before I do those things. After I'm in the moment, after I'm on stage talking to you guys, after I'm at the dinner at the restaurant, after I'm there with all the others, I'm fine. I'm outgoing, I'm fun, I enjoy being there. I can't be there a long time because I get so drained, but it's just getting over that hump of social anxiety. However, I would say if I had to pick that generalized anxiety is, is far worse because my generalized anxiety, it can be very crippling. Uh, I think about things obsessively. I will worry and I will tell myself a story in my brain. And it's, it's actually called storytelling, where I will ask myself these what if questions. What if this, what if this, what if this, what if this? And I build it up into this huge story before it starts swirling around. It becomes this tornado in my head and the tornado is suffocating and I can't breathe and it's too much and I feel like I will burst and the anxiety feeds my depression. So it's kind of this weird symbiotic relationship that they have. Um, my depression can get very, very dark. Uh, right now, actually, one of the reasons I haven't been posting a lot of videos is I've been dealing with, first off, uh, seasonal affective disorder, which is really mean that they call it sad. It's, it's basically a, a kind of depression that comes around during like the dark half of the year, you know? So uh, desperately need vitamin D and stuff like that. And it, it helps a li little, but you know, it doesn't help everything. I have depression on top of that. So I've been actually dealing with not just sad, <laughs> not just sad, but with depression as well. So I've been a little lax in my videos and for that I do apologize. However, at least I hope you guys understand why now my depression can get uh, very deep and very dark. And I have always had it as far as I can remember. I mean, uh, the first moment, the first age I can remember experiencing depression, I was probably, I was probably seven. And the first time I had suicidal ideation thoughts that I can recall, I was eight years old. So it has been there my entire life. It has been a part of me and a part of my life for a very long time. And I'm now 46 years old. So this is something that's just been with me forever. And for the longest time, I had not had it treated or, or anything like that. I didn't have a lot of therapy. I didn't have any medication. I really thought that that's just how life was. I thought this is how everyone's life is. You know, everyone thinks all these dark thoughts. Everyone just struggles with getting up and getting dressed or getting up and taking a shower or getting through work or struggles with reminding themselves to eat, you know, struggles with pulling themselves off the couch. I thought everyone's like this. This is how we all feel and, and it's just life. It turns out that's not life. And I went through the darkest period of my life uh, semi-recently, you know, for a 
six years, I was deep, deep in a very dark depression and very wrapped up in suicidal ideation. It turns out that that six year period actually was the launching point for me getting help and for me learning more about my mental health issues and for learning that it's not normal. I mean, it's, it's normal in that most people deal with mental health issues, but it's not normal to accept that that is just the way life is for everyone. So because of that, I sought extensive therapy and I experienced this wonderful program for about six months called Dialectical Behavior Therapy. And it was incredible. It was this, basically, I would go through cognitive behavioral therapy, which is when you just sit down with a therapist and talk. And then I would also, once a week, I would go to class, which was uh, part of the DBT, the Dialectical Behavior Therapy. And in class, we would learn all about the different skills and different tools that we could use not to take away any issues that we're having like anxiety or depression, but uh, find out ways to ease it to a point where it's like, I'm really uncomfortable, but I'm comfortable, comfortable enough that I can keep functioning and use other tools to help me ease my pain. And that was immeasurably helpful. And I really, really credit DBT for saving my life, even though I'm the one that saved my life. And I have, I have a, uh, I've gone very, very dark over the years, and I'm very proud to say that now, when I am experiencing a bout of depression, which I am currently, uh, when I'm experiencing about a bout of depression, I feel awful because I feel sad and alone, but I feel hopeful because I know now how to pull myself out of it. It's not so much pulling myself out of it, really, though. It's, it's more like waiting, you know? I use my tools and I make it as bearable as I can until I come out on the other side. And that's what I do. So those are pretty much the mental health issues that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, please know that you are not alone. It is so, so common to have mental health issues. I mean, I personally know very, very few people that aren't dealing with mental health issues and people that aren't dealing with things like depression and anxiety, generally they will have had trauma in their life and then they experience PTSD. So there is almost always some kind of mental health issue somewhere within someone. And the good thing is that that means there are more people out there that we can relate to and more people that they can relate to. And through that, maybe we can help each other because that's what life is about. Life is about lifting others up and lifting yourself up and just making the world a better place. So let's do what we can. Now, some of the tools that I use are very specific to things like anxiety or depression, but I'm gonna give you a couple of the tools that kind of cross over those boundaries. Whenever I'm feeling really just wound up and have that emotional tornado coming in, sucking all the oxygen out of me, when I'm dealing with a lot of anxiety, which does tend to blend over into depression, one of the first things that I do is I do deep breathing exercises where I will stop everything stop moving, stop talking, stop doing whatever it is I'm doing. If I can, I'll go to a quiet place, but if I can't, I'll stop right where I am. And I close my eyes and I try to block everything out. Not, not really not hear everything, just know that it's all static noise. And then I breathe very slowly in for four seconds and I hold it for four seconds. And then I breathe very slowly out for four seconds. And I'll do that three or four times. And it tends to feed oxygen to my brain and it calms me down, gets all the chemicals working in the right way. And it just kind of brings me, I call it bringing me back to zero. And that brings me back to zero really well. Another one that I really like, and this is especially helpful for me if I'm having a panic attack, it's called engage your senses. And so once again, I close my eyes first off, and then I engage all my senses. I will close my eyes and I will think, what do I hear? And I will really immerse myself in that moment and identify this is what I hear. What do I smell? What do I taste? What can I, what am I touching? What do I feel? Like, like, is it concrete under my feet? What is it that I'm feeling? And then I will open my eyes and think, what do I see? And I engage all of those senses. And once I do that, I find that I'm, I'm pretty calm on the other side of that. I'm not like blissed out or anything, but I'm pretty calm on the other side. So that definitely really helps me too. The, the breathing is really important and engaging my senses. I'd say those are the two big ones for me. I'm also a huge, huge fan of meditation. I mean, I 
don't have a set schedule for meditation. I used to. I used to get up and I would, I would meditate in the morning and I would meditate in the afternoon. Now it's more of a as needed basis. I do meditate still once or twice a day, but generally it's at my desk or something like that. You know, when I have a moment where I'm like, you know what, I should probably meditate because I'm feeling a little <coughs> If you've ever felt <coughs> meditation is for you. <laughs> I really think the apps are very helpful that are out there. There are two apps that I really rely on. One of them is called Calm. And another one is called Stop, Breathe, Think, or the Breathe app. Those are incredibly, incredibly helpful. And largely the stuff on them, the meditations on them are totally free. So feel free to download those and use them because I use them and I love them. There's also another app that really helps you keep track of your moods. So that, because sometimes when you're going through depression, it can feel like you're always down. Like I am this way all the time, forever for a whole eternity and that's just the way it is. This is my normal. And you might be surprised to see that it's not your normal. So there's an app called Dailyo, D-A-Y-L-I-O. Dailyo, you can go through and you can track <laughs> with little smiley face and little frowny faces and Lonzo, <laughs> he needs camera time, you know. But you can go through and you can track your moods throughout the month and everything throughout the year. And then it's good because it kind of gives you a perspective where you can look back and go, oh, okay, look, you know what? During this time period, I was experiencing this and that's why I was so down. But look at all the rest of this. And on average, I was not a super smiley face or a horrible sad face. I was just kind of in the middle. And it kind of gives you that perspective that you might not personally have. And identify different patterns. If you're like, okay, every time I had algebra class and was dealing with stress from algebra, I was having a really hard time each time. So clearly that's a trigger for me. And then you find ways kind of around with it and to deal with it. So that's really, really important to, to be able to recognize what your triggers are. So Dalio can definitely help with that. Um, I think it's really important that you know that people are out there who care and who want to listen to you. People are out there who need you and love you and appreciate you in the most wonderful way. And you might not think that, but trust me, it's true. I appreciate you. I love you. I want you around. So please reach out for help if you need it. Um, I am going to post at the end of this video some helplines, but first I want to tell you something about these helplines. When I was at my darkest point, and it was dark. When I was at my darkest point, I reached out actually to a chat line and spoke to this wonderful woman and she didn't tell me that what I felt was wrong. She didn't tell me that I was feeling better than I actually thought I was. She didn't brush with my feelings. She didn't invalidate me. She just listened and she was just there. And it made a huge amount of difference. That was an hour long chat. And that hour long chat kind of brought me back from the edge. So don't feel like just because you you need to be, you know, like, like, oh, you have to be suicidal in order to, to contact these people on chat or, or to contact people on phone. No, you don't. You don't have to be in any of those places. If you are just not feeling it and you don't know where those feelings are going to go, feel free to reach out to them because the goal is to like prevent acting on these feelings that can be tearing you down or feeling really super oppressive. And people are out there that want to listen. And I, for one, am a huge, huge supporter of them. Now, as an aside, I know that we have this amazing hoodie contest that just ended yesterday for me because I'm a day ahead of you, but it just ended on the 30th and I'm, I'm super, super excited to announce the winner. I have chosen the winner, so I know who won it and I will announce them later this week. And I know you're all excited, but I will get to that. But first and foremost, uh, I want to tell you guys something really important. You like, like Gracie. You are a very valued member of the Minion Horde. We all need you, and we all need you around. If you are going through something, reach out to one of us. Reach out to me, reach out to your fellow Minions. I want you guys to be able to rely on one another, lift each other up, be there for one another. Because if you have no one else on the planet, you have the Minion Horde. So please keep fighting. That's all for me today, Minions. Don't forget, Pippi Z loves you.